in the beta cells as these cut stand, that jobs will be lost and educational opportunities will be lost. For many children, food will be lost. How do you respond to him? They know exactly what they're doing. They, they try to act like they're sensitive to, to the words that uh, they're robbing money from the poor and, the, and they're giving the tax cuts to the rich. But the answer is that when they say they've got to balance the budget and they pick an extraordinary amount of money, like $780 billion over a 10-year period, in this bill we're talking about something like $189 billion. And they said, don't worry about it. We've got to balance the budget. That means that they're going to go in. They took $69 billion out of welfare. And that's 1%, 2% of the budget. And then they said another $100 billion coming out of discretionary funds. In other words, right now, they're leaving Social Security alone. What they really have done, and when we wake up and see all the people that have been silent and, and, and saying Gingrich looks good and, and this makes a lot of sense, they're using minorities as the scapegoats. But when they wake up, all of the responsibilities, all of the programs we fought for since the New Deal would have been severed. And they call that block grant. It means that the federal government is out of it. When we want to give money to the states to do what they want to do with it, we will do it. But they're not guaranteed. Uh, Colin Conforto, all these reports about what New Yorkers stand to lose with these cuts, uh, as published in the New York Times, are these reports accurate? Well, quite honestly, I don't believe they are accurate in large measure. First of all, you've got every special interest in Washington who stands to make a ton of money by sending out scare letters to people who then will make big contributions to fight the change in Washington. The fact of the matter is, why don't we get with it and admit that these programs have not worked? We've entrapped the poor. We've made them victims of welfare. We haven't helped them uh, in times of peril. And to say that Republicans, for some reason, uh, don't care about minorities, don't care about the downtrodden, is just a bunch of nonsense. Well, the fact is we're making changes, we're making effective changes, we're moving in a general direction to help people, and it is not about class warfare, it is not about helping the 1% uh, that has been bantied around, it's about helping all Americans. Colonel, come and Lloyd, will, will New York be better off when this is over? Look, Michael, let's really tell the American people who the special interests are. It's the special interests, it's the corporation, it's big business that sat with you all in a back room to write this contract on America. Now, what the middle class is concerned about is how they're going to send their kids to college, how they're going to pay the mortgage on the house. They're worried about crime in the community. They're worried about cops on the street. Well, senior the, citizens just, are wait, also wait, worried about Medicare. Just, just hang, a, hang on a minute. Yeah, you play the game bait and switch. You talk about giving seniors a cut in the one hand, and then you're going to cut Medicare, so they're going to have to pay Meaning higher fees than You want to give, you give uh, you know, minute, several million Michael, dollars to Penn Michael, Station. Michael, 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 I don't think I interrupted you, and so maybe we should be a little courteous to each other. In fact, I think, frankly, we should stop talking about liberals and conservatives. I work together with many of my colleagues in a bipartisan way on the Appropriations Committee. I worked with John Porter, for example, who voted against this tax cut bill because he believed you have to reduce the deficit first so interest rates stay down, and I happen to agree with him. But we work to fight the dollars for medical research, breast cancer research, juvenile diabetes. You should have come to those hearings to hear people talk about their needs, and in fact, this bill will cut biomedical research in New York by $281 million. That's real lives. Okay. That's lack of dollars for investment and research. That's jobs. Okay. Okay. So again, if we're talking about uh, New York State, for instance, under the uh, tax credit for children, that's going to bring $9 billion into New York State over the next five years. That is real money. That's going to help the local economy. And we are talking about a difference in philosophy. Congressman Forbes and I genuinely believe, now you may disagree, that by having tax relief, by giving more money back to localities and back to the states, that's going to provide more jobs for more people, whether they're black, white, Hispanic, Asian, whatever, that that is the best way to improve our economy, to help the middle class, and to help people break from the, uh, from, uh, the ghettos into the middle class. So this may be an honest difference, but no one on our side, certainly uh, Congressman Forbes and I, are trying to appeal to any special interest. I genuinely believe, along with people such as Jack Kemp, that the only way we're going to get our economy going and create more jobs is to give real tax relief and to cut back on failed government programs. Congressman King, it, 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 it seems that there's a real focus here on cutting aid, FDC, aid for dependent children, yeah, but, 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 but almost no focus 
on AFDC aid for dependent corporations. Where's the sense of balance what, in this? What, what this man is saying is unbelievable. He <laughs> is saying that there's a difference philosophically, that what we have to do is to give this tremendous tax refund to the richest people in the country, and somehow it's going to improve the economy. Now, Charlie, but an answer to your question is, where do they go first for the money? I mean, we don't know where the other $100 billion is coming from. What we do know is that they have cut programs for nutrition, they've cut yeah. programs oh, Charlie, for medicine, yeah, they cut Charlie. programs for welfare. They said that if a child is born to, to a mother who's 18 and the mother's not married, that child gets no cash benefit. Charlie, now, Charlie, where, does, Charlie. where do these jobs come from? Charlie, They're oh. crippling human beings saying that in the long run, that someone's got to get a better plan. Congressman Congress Ford trying equipment. to get in. Well, you know, the, the fact of the matter is that, uh, you know, Charlie, you know this very well that that is not the case, that these people are going to be helped, and what we're trying to do is target the money to the truly needy, and that is the key here. Uh, you guys made a big deal about the school lunch program. Well, 80% of the money under our program goes to the truly needy, not 60% as it was under your plan. Michael, the fact of the matter is, too, any, that you raised taxes for the, last five, for the last four years. You guys raised taxes half a trillion dollars, $500 million, and we're talking about $189 billion well, dollar relief for yourself. small businessmen and women, for senior citizens, and for the families of this country who have been just carrying around this burden and they can't afford it. One of the keys to the governor's plea to the United States Congress, which was accepted by Gingrich, was that there be no strings attached to the block grants. So when you say how the money is going to be used, you know that the Congress has nothing to do with what the governors do with that money. Well, you also know line, when the money runs out for these people that the Congress has no obligation to replenish it. You also know that next year when the more money is needed that you can't guarantee what, if anything, they'll get from the Congress. Well, we're we're, 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 we're going to come right back and see okay. what will cities do if the Senate ends up agreeing with the contract. We'll be right back. MCI presents the AT&T True False Quiz. True or false? AT&T True programs are simple. False. There are ten plans, six spending minimums, and three fees. That's simple. It just doesn't ring true. Tomorrow, Doug and Ann Porter will watch their only daughter walk down the aisle. The McDades will embark on a retirement journey to Scotland. And the Sweeneys will pack the last in the series off to college. Tomorrow, the dreams of many will be realized, thanks to a simple broker philosophy. We must never rest in our commitment to the individual. For those of us at Dean Witter, like Dave Rieger. Dave, are you still working? We measure success one investor at a time. At GMC Trucks, we built a reputation for truck strength. A considerable advantage that also comes in this handy take-home size. Sierra from GMC Truck. Night air. Perfect for sleep. You'll sleep? I'll sneeze. Now relieve allergy symptoms that keep you up at night. New Tylenol Allergy Sinus Nighttime. Night, honey. Honey? Put allergy symptoms to rest. My son is bringing his lady friend for dinner, and I've got such gas. So I take my Lanta Gas Relief Gel Cap with the best and only medicine for gas relief and an advanced gel cap. I feel great. Can't wait to meet her. Today on CNN, there's a new lineup of interview and debate programs waiting for you. Insight, analysis, and opinions to help gain a better understanding of this complex world. All from the people who cover your world. CNN. Welcome back. We're talking about the Republican contract with America and how it affects the cities. A lot of officials and others think the contract means bad news for the cities. Republicans say it would be another GOP good thing. Uh, Congressman Rangel, do you see cities scrambling uh, at this stage to make adjustments to the contract? Not yet, because what they've done is offer the governors money, and the mayors can taste that money coming, 
And most all of the cities and all of the states have budgets that they're trying to close. From the, from the governors? From the governors and the cities. All of them have, as a matter of fact, Governor Pataki, and I hope our Republican colleagues are listening, came to Washington and said, give him the money, he will cut Medicaid by $2 billion and save the federal government. So he was asking for a cutback so that the state would not match the funds. And then the, the mayor says, I'm with the governor because then the city would not have to match. And so it's just like going to the pawn shop saying, I don't care what the interest is. Give me my little bit of money now. What happens when the money runs out? The fact is, and Charlie, then the Congress said, did you Congress mean to fire Congress, 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 well, first of all, the programs right now, as they're constructed, in a lot of ways, don't have the flexibility that's so important to the states. And they want that flexibility. But uh, the premise that uh, Congressman Rangel is trying to suggest is that the governor somehow and the mayor somehow are going to divert this money for other uses is a fallacy. It cannot happen. The question was, what happened to the $2 billion? The reverend asked, what happened to the $2 billion? You know that as well as I do. Charlie, the savings on the $2 billion was the governor wanted to move more toward HMOs, and he wanted to have the right to experiment and to save money. What happened to the $2 billion by the federal government? Governor Pataki said, please give me 20% of it back. I'll save you. I'll cut $2 billion. I'll save the federal government $2 billion. The Reverend is asking, what happens to the $2 billion that was saved? You save the program, Charlie, because the program's running out of money. And the fact of the matter is, they want the flexibility to have HMOs to make these programs work. Medicare is going to be out of money in seven years. Medicaid is going broke. And we're trying to fix the things that the well, Democrats Michael, for years refused to fix. Me, Michael, 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 just hang on a minute. I just want to set the, set the record straight. Right. I'm in favor of reforming programs. I'm in favor of downsizing government. In fact, it was the Democrats that reduced the deficit $500 billion over five years. We did that. With a $500 billion tax increase. Just, just, just hang on, just hang on, hang on a second. I'll listen I disagree to you. with that, but go on. I'm not willing to send to the states, with no strings attached, hundreds of billions of dollars. I was elected by my constituents to represent them. Now, what we can do, and the way we have been doing it, is giving the states waivers. Let them experiment. Right. Let's see what the states can do. Tommy Thompson has done right. some That's good right. things. Engler exactly. has done some but you're willing to say to the state, here's hundreds of billions of dollars, no accountability, just give them the money. I'm well, sorry, I'm not with you. Know you We're know, not it no just a attached. second, you Come know on, you're know giving them accurate. a block grant, okay, listen, and some way. states will do it, and some states will won't. Some kids will be out of the school lunches. Some st no, states will survive. The wealthy them. kids will be out, maybe. Yeah. Well, the the oh, the the, 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 the clock can get up. We'll be right back, just a minute, Congressman, with some final thoughts on what will happen to the cities. Don't go away. My dad once said, 90% of sports is from the neck up. Experience tells me he was right. They say only the strong survive. Experience tells me it's true. Now, I know I'm just a rookie, but I see what it takes to succeed. Hard work, strength, We've all done this before. You hang a picture, you change its position, and before you know it, your wall looks like a dartboard. Introducing the Does It Handy Hanger. Nothing does it like does it. Just place a handy disc on the applicator and watch the special adhesive heat up. Press it on the wall and that's it. Use the Does It Handy Hanger on painted walls, on wood paneling, on wallpaper. As the adhesive cools, it creates a molecular bond that safely holds up to 10 pounds and more. Yet the patented handy hanger can be removed as easily as it attaches without leaving any mark at all. A nail in ceramic tile? Forget it! But Does It does it on tile. It even does it on glass. And look, your Does It Handy Hanger also comes with these utility hooks. Use them in the kitchen to hang oven mitts and cookware. Use them in the bathroom for towels and your blow dryer. Use them in the bedroom, your living room, even in your tool shed. Does It does it everywhere. You get
get the Dozen Electric Applicator, 10 Disc Scent Hooks, and the Disc Remover, all for $29.95. Order your Dozen Handy Hanger now. Use your credit card and call 1-800-257-1257 in the U.S. or Canada. That's 1-800-257-1257. Or send $29.95 plus $5.95 shipping to Does It Handy Hanger, P.O. Box 2919, Atlanta, Georgia. Order now. Call 1-800-257-1257. Both sides will continue. For a transcript of this and many other CNN programs, call Journal Graphics at 1-800-CNN-NEWS. More from the Both Sides panel in a moment. Whoa! What's that? Honey, I see CO. Yeah. And that one? 69 Firebird. Look at it. Hey, Dad, there's a grand damn coupe. I bet it's got a 5 feet and 150 horsepower, like our sedan. Are you a Pontiac man or what? Yeah, and I'm going to drop a grand dam. Really? Which one? A fast one. That's my boy. Of course, I have to talk to your mom about this. I'll talk to her. Huh. I'm going to have a baby. I mean, you know, my wife and I, we're going to have a baby. Well, it does kind of change things. You know, we're looking at buying a house now, which means living on a budget, paying off all the credit cards. And I gotta get all my ducks in a row. I'm just like my dad. The future is coming. At Fannie Mae, we're the nation's largest source of funds for mortgage lenders. Call us for a free guide to get you started on the path to home ownership. Tonight on CNN Presents. Go undercover and behind the lines with the DEA to bust a Colombian drug ring. Waging a war of law and disorder. CNN presents tonight, 9 Eastern. Congressman. Came. From the view of the cities, we see the downsizing. Federal government downsizing, corporate downsizing, military downsizing, plants going to Mexico and going to China. So tax base is eroding. Uh, and families are disintegrating. And half of all public housing built the last 10 years were jails. Oh, where, is, where is the hope? Where are the jobs in the contract? Well, that's why we had the tax cuts we did. And that's why what Charlie Rangel said before was so misleading about this being a tax cut for the rich. A family making $200,000 gets a 2% tax cut. A working family making $30,000 gets a 48% reduction in their tax liability. We're giving more money back to working families. By a capital gains tax, by doing that, we're going to be creating jobs. We have to get government off the backs of business. We have to get it off the backs of state and local governments, give power to the private sector, give power to local governments, power to the states, because the federal, federal bureaucracy just doesn't work. The only way our economy can expand is to get the shackles off the private sector. You, 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 you're using a lot of the right words like, like power, but given the fact that jobs are leaving, plants are closing, our tax base eroding, and jails are being built, what is the right now plan for job creation? Well, the Capital gains job... tax cut, he's telling you. All of the no, hundreds Charlie, of Charlie, thousands Charlie, of Americans no, that are unemployed, no. but some that have gotten out of school, they can't have the American dream. They can't get into jobs. Charlie, the reason you, you ask the dream. question, Charlie, where the are the jobs? He tells you it's in the capital gains Charlie, tax Charlie, cut. Charlie, Those the are reason, the jobs. Charlie, the reason we're losing jobs is because of 40 years of failed liberal oh, policies. Why you don't Charlie, you want to bring back jobs? Ronald Reagan created 18 Ronald million Reagan. jobs. 18 million Ronald Reagan gave us this deficit. Charlie, you are wrong. At the end of Ronald Reagan's administration, the deficit was less a percentage of gross national product, product than it was under Jimmy Carter. What brought us the deficit was the combination of the tax cut with George Bush and the congressional Democrats, that, and also the increased spending under George Bush. Ronald Reagan did not bring about the deficit you're talking about. You know, they made one Republican, they made them all. You don't believe half of what you're saying, Ch and you know it. I, 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 I want to do a kind of, of if I can order, have a little order here, and do a, a quick <laughs> round robin. Uh, have the Republicans in the House, the representatives, change the outlook for urban areas for the better or created havoc? But Congressman King, just a 30-second response. 
No, I, I think we are seriously looking out for the inner city, for the city, and for all Americans, because we feel that government programs at the federal level do not work. We want to give power back to the cities, back to the people, and empower the poor, not have bureaucrats run their lives. This is a contract on New York. On the one hand, you give the people back a couple of dollars, but the middle class is going to be paying in rising student loans and rising interest rates. They're going to be paying because we're going to have to cut back on our biomedical research. They're going to be paying every step of the way. So it's bait and switch. It's a farce. It doesn't make sense. It's a continued war on New York. Congressman Forbes. Well, the fact of the matter is that there's com uh, promises made, promises kept. It is not anything like Congresswoman Lowy has said. In fact, we're going to give power back to the people, to average people. We're going to create more jobs for small businessmen and women in New York. And look at the big government in New York and what happened over the last 18 years. And you only have a laboratory there to know that it didn't work the other way and we're going to bring improvements. The Congressman, I'm still asking a very basic question with the downsizing. Where we're losing 700,000 student jobs this summer. You feel that we'll pay for the loss of student jobs on the back end of the summer? The fact of the matter is, Reverend, that a lot of those jobs are uh, duplicating uh, block grant monies that are already coming to localities <laughs> for jobs as well. And uh, so, you know, make work uh, part-time and uh, minimum wage jobs created by government does not provide for the long-term health of the New York economy, the Long Island economy, or any city in America. But, and but we're at the as... basis of trying to go for long-term reforms. When the rhetoric of the moment is replaced by the reality of reform, Americans are going to be with us, but, not but, with that but, line but, of thinking. But when Congress washes its hands on this, you know what's going to happen? These basic rural legislatures are already rather hostile to it. To they're going to choke these cities. I respectfully no. disagree. Yeah, I mean, look at Michigan as an example. I mean, Governor Engel come in, made tough cuts. He made tough spending cuts, tough welfare cuts. The fact is, there's more jobs now in Michigan than there ever was. Congressman Engel, and, and his rating is over this. 60 percent. 86 percent of the capital gains tax cut goes to people making over $100,000. But tell the poor and those seeking jobs not to worry, because Congressman King says that these tax cuts are really going to provide jobs. But, 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 but will these cuts in Germany is going to have a capital gains Will these cuts create ultimately, will they make the cities better, long run, or have it? It's, it? it's going to take hope away from people. That's what saves cities, that's what saves people. And it's going to run havoc because those that are untrained are hopeless. Those that get out of high school and college won't have jobs. And the cities won't have monies to help them. The federal government has decided to turn its back on these people and leave it to the multimillionaires. It's a sad period in America's well, life. Well, we're about restoring hope and opportunity to average people. That's the bottom line here. We are giving power and we're giving money back to the people, back to the cities. It's 40 years of liberal rule that are brought to the cities to the terrible state they're in today. What we want to do is give cities the opportunity to rebuild and people to get their lives back together. And I was a working family of $30,000. Let, let me thank you. Th 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 there's there's a, a time constraint here. I want to thank all of my guests and thank, thank you, you for being with us. We're back here next Sunday at, at 1230. See you then. Do it all. Keep hope alive.